Hi everybody, it is February 11, 2019. I posted this video last night and I'm not going to continue uh, this video when it gets to the really sadistic parts. But I was thinking about some of the comments and thinking about my conversations with people who have either family or friends as you know, cops, or they're married to, or their son is, and the immediacy with which they go and divert a conversation that you're having about an incident, one particular incident with a few, what they consider to be the bad apples. They immediately go to, most are good, but there are a few bad apples. If what they said was true, we would not be living this reality. If it was true that on the whole, most cops were good, we would be living a very different reality. So how did we get here when we have been seeing with... <laughs> Uh, seeing increasingly, increasingly, these cops who are so out of control, clearly they feel they can get away with anything. And this video is going to be focusing on policing for profit, civil asset forfeiture laws in states, stealing, literally stealing money, homes, cars, property, any... TVs, anything they can get their hands on that is worth something, the police all over the country are stealing. They are a criminal gang, and just because they happen to have a badge and they wear their costume, their uniform, and they have been made legal it does not mean they're not criminals. They are. And in fact, in South Carolina, wow, earns a D minus for civil forfeiture laws. I'll, there was an, a two-year investigation done by uh, reporters of the Greenfield News and Independent Daily Mail. And now we are seeing the headlines on these newspapers, local newspapers here in South Carolina every single day, more and more of those individuals who were not charged with the crime, innocent, but they had their property stolen by the police. You cannot claim for one second that on the whole, most are good. There's just a few bad apples. It doesn't work at all. The truth, I understand, is very difficult to face. But the truth is, on the whole, most are immoral. Even if you have that police officer that is not committing any crimes, his or her silence makes him or her immoral, putting them on the wrong side. You cannot claim to be good if you sit around doing nothing. That is how evil spreads. Good people sitting around doing nothing. So for all of the cops that are, that, that haven't been corrupt and, and have uh, not committed any crimes, if you're walking around thinking you're a good one and you've got family and friends defending you as a good one, but you are not doing anything, not speaking out about, about how unbelievably corrupt and violent our cops have become. You, then, you are the reason why this continues on and on. More and more people getting traumatized by these few bad apples. Every cop involved in this incident was just as complicit as that maniac 
who held the taser. Did any of these cops stop it? No, they were right there engaging with it. They all should be fired. And for those who are claiming um, writing, and I, look, I understand that, that our police have been uh, Israeli trained. I've posted mm, several videos on Kafka Winston World about our police, uh, the chiefs of police, are going over to Israel, Israel to be trained by the Israel, Israeli military. This is not good because they're going to be coming back and they're going to be treating Americans like Palestinians. And sure enough, that's what we have got going. But is it really the training? Is it really the, that um, uh, they're, they're all in this um, fraternal order. They're all in this association. Is that what makes them immoral? Is it the training that makes them immoral? Or is it that they engage in this training and come back and use the training against innocent people? It's within them. And I almost feel like people are using that to excuse their behavior. Every individual has to account for themselves. If you do not have a moral core, you will accept that training, you'll go along with the training, and you'll come back and apply that training in your work because you don't have a moral core. Something is wrong with you as an individual because everybody knows what is right and what is wrong. And let's not be kids and, you know, uh, claim that we don't, that somebody else has to tell us. That is, that's great for those who just want to remain children and give themselves excuses and justifications for why they behave the way they do. So, and, you know, this is about the police. We have... We have people behaving so immorally all over the place in our country. So a lot of people think that, you know, it's the police and the military. They are the order followers. They're the ones who are um, engaged in spreading this evil. It's not just them. It is not just them. We've got order followers all over the place. We have Americans who have so little courage and strength within their own uh, individual self that, well, they've just got to go along to get along. And they never speak up about all of the wrongs that they see, all of the immorality that they see. So we are all a part of this nightmare that we are living. So what's happening in California and uh, South Carolina? Well, this investigation has revealed quite a lot. Um, I'm sorry, a neighbor just came over. I'm not even sure where I um, left off, but a real problem here in South Carolina, as well as we have a real problem all over the country. From 2009 to 2014, $22,677,048 were taken from residents in South Carolina by the police. You have to, you, we really need to change our, our worldview, our viewpoints, our opinions. We've got to see reality for what reality is and we have to call a spade a spade. We've got to face the truth. The police are criminals. And just because state governments have and federal have given them a legal right to just pull over anybody that they want and if they find money, they can take it. Just because it's the law does not mean that it's not criminal 
it's moral. It, 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 I mean, 17 million in three years, South Carolina, 17 million. Now, I did a lot of highlighting on a lot of articles, but I'm not going to go, you know, reading every article because you know it, right? You know it. How do we get through to people? I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's like everybody has to defend, you know, whoever is in their group. And that's why these labels that we place on ourselves can be very dangerous. Because a group mentality, well, when you assign yourself in a group, then you lose your individuality, which means that you lose your own individual moral core. And you just go along with the group. And in order to do that, if that group is actually displaying horrific, gross immorality all over the place, there's a tendency for people to not see it because they have to defend that group. What is the incentive for this? Now, some states have gotten rid of only a few. I, I think it's Nebraska, North, uh, North, um, New Mexico. They got rid of their civil forfeiture, asset forfeiture laws. There might be another state in there. Several states reformed their laws. South Carolina? Nope. No. And in fact, the police even <laughs> violate their own guidelines for civil asset forfeiture. In order for civil asset forfeiture to um, allow a police officer to seize property, they need to have found a pound of marijuana. They're seizing property from people who have had no, there's no evidence, nothing, no. They're not charged with a crime. They're completely innocent and they're taking their property. But with the uh, marijuana guidance, they're seizing property from someone who had a joint in their car. So you have all of these heads of the police and sheriff's departments saying things that are so outrageously in your face wrong, but they claim that without the incentive of profit from civil forfeiture, stealing from the residents of South Carolina, officers probably wouldn't pursue drug dealers. Wow. Wow. So they wouldn't do their job if they couldn't steal money and benefit from that money themselves. Does that sound uh, uh, even reasonable to you? Does, well, you've got Clemson, you've got Aiken, you've got Greenfield, you've got Greenwood, you've got Maudlin, you've got Traveler's Rest, all of these places in South Carolina. All of the police chiefs go right along with it. It's completely fair because, um, well, first of all, it provides funding for our police. It, this is, I thought taxes did that, but no, you're going to steal from residents in South Carolina to provide police departments funding to go after drug dealers. But they're also saying it's fair. It's fair. Because anybody can go to court and get that money back. All right. Well, what they found was that on average, it takes about 304 days to get your property back from the police. Most don't get their property back at all. Judges are also... Um, approving requests, default requests from the police. 
the police. Oh, there's so many errors and errors in the prosecutor's office because they're not notifying people. You know, so if a son is driving a truck, and this is what happened in South Carolina, a son driving a truck owned by the mother gets caught with drugs and he's sent to jail. Well, how would the mother know? Oh, well, she hears from the son. Mom, I had your truck. They seized your truck. Okay, I'll call the sheriff's department, which she did. And the son writes two letters to the sheriff's department, but they pretend they haven't heard anything. Four months later, the prosecutor requests a default on the truck because that police department wants the truck. The mother was never notified. Never heard from the police department. No one notified her as to what the hell was going on with her truck until a Greenville reporter showed up and started asking questions. And the next day, the mother was notified by the police, we have your truck. This is sick, twisted, gross immorality taking place in South Carolina, in a Christian state, something is happening that's not quite right. It doesn't fit. The largest, hugest majority of residents are Christians here. How could this be going on? 75% of forfeiture cases end with the state keeping the money or goods. I will link below to everything. Widow fights off town's attempt to seize her home. Um, this is a God-fearing sheriff. God-fearing Spartanburg County Sheriff Chuck Wright. He's God-fearing. Guess what he did? Well, in uh, one of his seizures, a truck, a $50,000 truck was seized and he kept it for himself. Oh, he's God fearing. Kept it for himself, but he went a little further. That cash that they seize goes into a general fund. He took 20000 out of that fund to pay off the truck and uses it as his own. Oh, it's modified, you know, with all of the police, uh, you know, equipment and the sirens. And he loves that truck. Oh, it's real fast. Do you understand that it doesn't matter how you're trained? It doesn't matter. Uh, what your position is. It does not matter if you're black or white or any other color. It doesn't matter what your religion is, whether you're a Jew or a Christian, Buddhist, atheist, does not matter if you, that individual, if they don't have a moral sense about themselves, a moral core, they can call themselves anything. I'm Christian and I'm God-fearing and I'm going to steal from my base. You know, those people I'm supposed to be protecting, I'm going to steal from them. It doesn't matter. The individual has to do that work to develop their moral core. That's when you get the individual who says, I can't do this. It's immoral. I cannot do this. It's wrong. We don't have very many Americans who can do that. So you have these operations, operations with police uh, in counties, the police departments, the sheriff's departments, they're, um, they're along I-95 or Interstate 85, Interstate 26, and they're stopping literally about mm, one out of five cars to get the ticket revenue 
and two, they stop them for these minor, minor, minor violations. One sheriff deputy holds the record for stopping people for driving too close. This guy heads Operation Thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Rolling thunder, rolling thunder, right? Where the police in their unmarked cars are sitting waiting. Who should we stop? And a lot of people are actually afraid to fight for their property. A lot of people give up. They're afraid of the police. When the people fear their government, you have tyranny. And when the government fears the people, you have freedom. We've got tyranny. This woman in her 80s. So all she got, her home. And that town wanted to seize it. The police wanted to seize her home. Why? Because they claimed that there was drug selling right here underneath this umbrella. So they were going to take this woman's home based on what they were claiming. And she was saying, no. Uh, she had no knowledge of drug dealing underneath this umbrella, but she knew that people at night were congregating on the street and down the street at stores selling drugs. Why is why should she be held responsible and have her home taken away from her? In order to fight, to keep her home, she went bankrupt. You see the nightmare that these people are putting other individuals through? They do stop black people more than they stop white people. White people have uh, a higher percentage or they're more likely to get their money returned to them, their property returned. Um, but you have so many different people, uh, 3,200 people snagged by South Carolina civil forfeiture laws. And this was just in a few years. Um, the cases, most are just not charged, <laughs> but they keep the property. They do whatever they can to keep the property. This woman, it took her 20 years to get her property back. It was after her husband died. The police, the, the, the onus is on the individual. They have to prove that what was going on, they were not involved in any illegality, and they have to pay for attorneys. And often the, the, the police who seize trucks and cars, when the person finally does get that car or truck back, the police then hand them a bill for storage of the property that they seized and stored. So they, one individual in, in these stories had to pay $500 to a police department to get his car back when he fought and was found, you know, his car was not involved in any drug trafficking. Here, had to pay 500 for storing his SUV for more than a half a year and just to end the nightmare, he paid it. $8,000. He was renovating someone's property. Police pulled him over in Greenwood, South Carolina. I smell pot. They took his $8,650 in his car. There are so many heartbreaking stories. Brandy cooks. Brandy cook. So her friend calls and says, will you give me a lift to someone's house? She said, sure. She drives her friend and then the police suddenly arrive and Brandy had nothing to do with it, didn't even know what the hell was going on, 
but they took her uh, $4,670. We have not police or peace officers anymore. We've got a criminal gang that the state has authorized. That's it. So we've got a state that is criminal authorizing the criminals to steal from residents who are innocent. Should this be going on? Of course not. Of course not. Be careful when you go to the post office or FedEx and you're sending money. Do not do what Ryan Hammer did in Greenville. So his friend calls and says, I'm in you know, bad straits, can you loan me 6000 for child support? He said, sure. He didn't want to send cash through the mail, so he went to the post office and asked, what's the best way to mail money? They told him he could buy six 1000 money orders, which he did, and because he couldn't do overnight with the post office, he went to FedEx and drop the money orders in a FedEx cardboard envelope and the employee sealed it with tape. He paid a premium $64.25 to have it shipped overnight and his friend said the next day I didn't receive it. He calls FedEx. The FedEx employee tells him the Greenville Police Department seized your package. Really? Officers they seized it in a legal process known as civil assets forfeiture. The police believed Harris' package was related to illegal drug trade. Really? So Hammer calls the police. They invite him to come down for questioning, but he instead called his godfather an attorney. Hammer, a pilot, a part owner of a flight school at the Greenville downtown airport wrote a letter to the police explaining what happened. Two weeks after his money orders were seized, he received notice that Greenville police had asked the court to forfeit the money to them. Wow. So the police steal the money. And even though they got that letter from Ryan Hammer explaining everything, they didn't call him to say, all right, there must have been a misunderstanding. Um, let's clear this up. No. They went to the judge immediately to get a, a default. Forfeit the money to us. <laughs> Records indicate that the Greenville police were working parcel interdiction at the FedEx facility. And this comes from the assistant solicitor, Sylvia Harrison. She said, the phone number on the package was disconnected or illegitimate, and the parcel had flaps that were glued and taped down. Once unwrapped, the package contained a coffee bag and a vacuumed sealed package with money orders totaling 6,000. It said in this uh, record, public record filed by this solicitor um, that the package was oversealed and padded with foam insulation to try to deter drug sniffing dogs. The sender paid for the delivery in cash and used money orders to avoid a paper trail. But that's not what happened. Hammer had the receipts to prove it. They made up a story so that they could keep that six thousand dollars. Fortunately he had the receipts that showed he paid for it with a credit card. The receipt also listed his phone number, a number Hammer said he used twice to call the police in Greenville, in Greenville before they submitted court records saying the phone number was disconnected. Hammer's phone number was disconnected, yet Hammer called the police with that phone number. 
If you can lie and get an awful lot of people around you to support that lie, you can be screwed. There was no coffee bag, no foam insulation, no vacuum sealed packages, no heavily taped box, just the one envelope that weighed a tenth of a pound. So he considered just letting the matter go, but he was worried because he was worried about future police harassment. That means you have criminals, thugs, working in your police department. If everybody would just get band together to get rid of these thugs, you wouldn't have to live this way. Um, but that's just not happening here. Um, they're criminal. It's in our face every single day. And we allow it. So his attorney convinced him to fight. He did. Um, and he was sure that it was a huge bar embarrassment for the police department. This is not an embarrassment. These are not people who feel shame. This doesn't stop them. They continue. They don't give a shit. All, they fight like hell. They make sure that they put up every possible barrier so that you don't get your property back because they want it. And do you know that there are counties? It's like they hold a contest for to see who can get the most in civil asset forfeiture. And then they give those police officers like awards and and fringe benefits and their police department gets to hold on to all of those funds. Here we go again, Hammer had to play, pay attorney fees. So nobody's made whole. Nobody's made whole in this. So be careful how you're sending money. Be very careful. This, you can see all of the stories. It's a huge investigation. And here is an index of all of the, uh, the, store, the articles that have been published on this taken investigation. It's heartbreaking to see how many people's lives have been turned upside down. Yeah, and this guy, the truck right, this God-fearing sheriff in Spartanburg sees a 2012 Ford Raptor made it his own. Five things we learned. Police seize millions of dollars each year. In your state, civil forfeiture may not be used heavily at all. Nebraska, New Mexico, oh, and North Carolina have limited, eliminated uh, civil forfeiture. 29 states have enacted reforms to place some limits on forfeiture. South Carolina is known as the poster child of injustice via civil asset forfeiture laws. This God-fearing state. Police often don't make an arrest. They don't charge. Or they drop the charges. But they keep the property seized. Black men bear the brunt of forfeiture cases. Low-income people bear the brunt. You attack people that you don't think will have the resources to fight it. And they don't. Or you attack people who may fear further police harassment. Yeah, your cash disappears in minutes, and it may take years to get back if you get it back at all. 73% of civil asset forfeiture seizures end in default. It goes to the police departments the state.
you cannot claim that on the whole police are good not when you have the police now so unbelievably out of control showing us how grossly psychopathic and immoral they are it doesn't work that way you're deluding yourself we've got a real problem with Americans here individuals in the aggregate who lack a moral core and whether they know what's right or wrong they choose wrong over right and the only way that we can ever get back any degree of sanity morality in this country is for the individual to do the work necessary to develop that moral core to the point where it's guiding them it becomes so strong that it is what propels you through life outside of that nothing's gonna change nothing but yes when the people fear their government you've got tyranny and we've got tyranny all links are below